All right, they always give me these uh, stories. I don't know why. 53% of workers age 60 or older say they are postponing retirement, and most want to remain anchors for as long as they possibly <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. Uh, the associate uh, publisher for Barron's Wealth and Asset Management, Jack Otter, for our weekly retirement series. Jack, always good to see you. Good to see um, you. So they have to work longer, and uh, they don't have the dough they really want now, right? Let's start with the happy news, because this discussion is always so dismal. People are living longer, and living sure. longer, healthier lives. And an incredible statistic, a baby born in 1950, the odds were he wouldn't live to 50. Uh, so really? really, more than half died before age 50, if you were born in 1900. So that's the good news. The bad news is, the longer you live, the more chance there is that you'll run out of money. And people are so inadequately prepared for this. 30% of baby boomers have less than $50,000 saved for retirement. So, you know, they can do things, you know, later in life to, you know, speed up, uh, you know, their 401k contributions and the like. But even that isn't going to get you paid dirt, you know, immediately. Well, it's not a pension. Um, yeah. You know, we, we switched in the 80s from what was called defined benefit programs. In other words, you got a check every week, month, whatever it was for the rest of your life. Now it's called defined contributions, which is kind of a euphemism. It means you, you put it in, Neil, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, see what happens. Unless you contribute, you're not going to be uh, getting. Um, how bad is that, though? I mean, uh, uh, that, that would seem to buy right off the bat that half those in that age bracket uh, are nowhere remotely ready for retirement. So what are their options right now? I think that's a fair statement. If you are in the boomer bracket, especially at the upper end, and you've only got $50,000, you don't have many options other than working longer. So that's number one. Uh, number two, and I hate to ever tell people to go see an expert, right? I'm supposed to be the expert, but I can't help every individual watching with their own problems. I highly recommend a financial advisor who is a fiduciary. That's crucial because we hear terrible stories about unsafe. There aren't many of them, but all it takes is one, unsavory characters. How would you know that? Um, well, someone who's getting a percentage of the stuff he or she is hawking, right? Uh, well, it not Versus in, that person. It, yeah, not in every case is that commission a bad thing, but go to a fiduciary. Um, there are certain, pro, there are certain um, organizations, NAPFA and APFA. Um, there's the Garrett Financial Planning Network, which is very inexpensive if you don't have a whole lot of money. But people make, people tend not to do really dumb things. They make lots and lots of very small decisions that are wrong because they don't have the expertise. You know, they tap the Roth 401k first because they think, oh, I'm paying no taxes. Most advisors in most cases say, you know what, save that, let it grow without, um, you know, compound without taxes and tap the other sources. Um, so that's very technical, but you, you get my point. Right. There's lots of little decisions that you make correctly if you have advice and lots of bad decisions. Well, you've you written don't. about this before, but this idea that the closer you get to retirement, the more conservative you're supposed to be in your investment strategy. But I know a lot of people to make up for lost time or not sucking enough away, they get very devil may care and they've, they're pouring their money into fang stocks, or whatever, which has been nice over the last couple of years. But they've, 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 they've made some big risky bets. Well, what, what is the strategy? So the studies show actually that it's a barbell. Um, when, you, when Fidelity and other companies look at these retirement accounts, they see conservative people putting everything in bonds or cash, which is wrong. And then the risk takers you're talking about put everything in, in high-flying stocks, which is also wrong. Yeah. You have to be widely diversified. If you are that boomer, say you're 60 years old, um, you've got another 30 years ahead of you, potentially, according to actuarial tables. So you can't just be in conservative, I don't want to lose any money kind of stuff. 20 years from now, your stock holdings are going to be worth more. More than they are today, uh, even though we'll have some dips. Well, what about this, this rule that, you know, plan on about 80 percent of your final year's income, that that's what you're going to need? That strikes me as high. It is very high, and this is actually a raging debate amongst the sort of people who think about this thing, yeah. this kind of thing, because really, I mean, if you're paying college tuition and maybe a mortgage that you'll end up paying off and so forth, your expenses are a lot more, a lot more than 20 percent higher now than they will be in retirement. On the other hand, health care costs can be killer. Um, Fidelity says plan on a quarter million dollars in health care costs over a couple's course of retirement. And for a lot of people that didn't get insurance, you know, that kind of thing for that sort of, a lot of them are sick now, so they're not going to get that insurance, right? Well, uh, let's hope they can find a way. Certainly there's Medicare and Medicaid, which is, you know, right. your, your current condition doesn't make any difference there. Um, but yeah, the, the, there are no easy solutions. Um, you just have to make sure that you work as long as you can. Um, and, you know, the interesting thing about your, the stat you read earlier, 
we certainly know a lot of people would like to work longer and you know their company sees some younger people who are cheaper and they're not able to work as long as they want the Supreme Court actually made it harder to prove age discrimination uh, yeah. so even more people than that would like to be working all right, but the message you have for them is to keep working to your 100. Uh, you're lucky to make a fraction of what you were making before, and your bosses are out to get you and replace you with someone much younger. Right? Let's start. Let's go back to a happy story. Yeah. Uh, I spoke to a financial advisor once who, a woman in New York, very high cost of living, came to him, showed her stuff, said, when can I retire? And he said, mm, never. Okay. And she said, I want to go live with my mother, my parents. They retired to Mexico. They're not in good health. And he said, oh, okay, you can retire now with that cost of living. So, so one the, option is cost. move. Yeah. yeah. All right. On that bright and cheerful note, uh, Jack Otter, <laughs> I told you this would be a toe tapper, this whole segment. <laughs>